May I have her, sir? Yes, call Mr. Hastings. Tell him Fred Gerard is here. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We have no guest of that name. Well, that's correct. He's not a guest. He owns a hotel, or maybe you didn't know. Oh, Mr. Wolf Hastings. Yes, that's the one. I'm sorry, sir. He's not in residence. Let me speak to the manager. I'm the manager, sir. You're Mr. Medwin? Why, yes. You started to pick up the phone, Mr. Medwin. Changed your mind. Why? A natural mistake. Of course, I recognize Mr. Hastings' name. Do you recognize his signature? It's the bottom paragraph. That's all that pertains to you. Mr. Medwin, our hotel manager will put you in touch with me any hour of the day or night. It would seem to be signed by Mr. Hastings. Fine. Now, shall we start all over again? That letter was dated two years ago, sir. Do you have anything more recently signed by him that would make this obsolete? No, sir. Then why don't we do as the man says? You put me in touch with him. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Hastings is not in residence. But I came 3,000 miles to see Wolf Hastings, and I intend to see him. And I will see him before I leave. If I knew where he could be reached, sir. Oh, make the effort. Force yourself. I suggest that you get that message to him. I'm going to be in the bar for an hour. Fifteen, eighteen, please. Yes, sir. Beautiful day. And what is your pleasure? I'm not here for pleasure. Canadian. Four fingers straight. Yes, sir. May I say you brought your troubles to the right place? I'm betting on it. Just leave the bottle. I may be here a while. Waiting for someone? Or something. I, uh, I see we're on the same team, so to speak. Hmm? Oh, the lighter. Hastings Enterprises. No, I'm not a member. Mr. Hastings sent me this. Mr. Wolf Hastings? Is there another? You know him? Isn't it possible? Well, yes, anything's possible. He's the man I'm waiting to hear from. <laughs> Did I say something funny? <laughs> I'm sorry. I always laugh in the wrong places. Greek tragedy makes me hysterical. You're not a Greek by any chance. No. I'm not even sure I'm a tragedy. But nobody is. That's what makes it so funny. Or was it the thought of my waiting to hear from Wolf Hastings? No, no. It isn't funny the second time. Or the first. Unless you know something I don't. Well, I probably do. I'm a student. I study things you wouldn't believe, like people. Do you believe in people? Some people, don't you? Oh, yes. I believe in people who don't even exist, just like you do. Like Wolf Hastings? Now, be serious. You and I both know that there is no such thing as a Wolf Hastings. Tell me more about Wolf Hastings. Well, students don't explain. Professors explain. You look like a professor. I'm a geologist. And the subject is still Wolf Hastings. You really believe he exists? Oh, he always has, since my college days. College days? Geologist? Gerard, no. you're a friend. Yes, but how... No. Go away. Go home. Fred, forget it. Oh, you do know him. You know about me from him. That hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, please sit down. If you just knew how important it is that I see him. I can't help you. But you've got to tell me where he is. What's going on? What's he said about me? Oh, just talk. He used to talk sometimes. After work, when the pressures were off. You worked for him? I still do. Once, well, once I fell in love with him. Not for long. And mostly because of the way he talked when the pressures were off. About what? Simple things. Times gone by, college days, college friends. One friend. <sighs> That's funny. I was always the big man on campus, and he was just a skinny little 
would-be poet with long hair and a rich old man. And a friend. The only friend who didn't want something from him. Is that it? Does he think I want something from him? Is that why he won't see me? Oh, I can't explain him. How can I reach him? You can't. Nobody can. He reaches them if he wants to. But you can make him want to. Now, I don't know what the trouble is between us or what he thinks it is. But I want to hear it from him. Nobody tells him anything. Not anymore. Excuse me. Yeah, but where is he? I told you to forget it. I'm very sober and I'm very serious now. For your own good, Professor, take the loss, whatever it is, and get away from here, far away, while you're still able. <laughs> You know, I attended bar in this hotel for seven years, and I've only seen Mr. Hastings once. He ordered a glass of milk. <laughs> I guess when they get where he is, they really aren't like you and me. You know, it must be the altitude. Oh, he was always different. In college, they thought he was some kind of a crackpot. He never scared anybody then. You know what his great passions were? Poetry and trains, steam-driven trains. He loved the sound of them, thought it was poetry. First enterprise he ever undertook was to make recordings of locomotives. Now he's got railroads and a few dozen steamships. You know, he could get up a real symphony. He's probably forgotten all that by now. Excuse me. Along with everything else, Versailles room. Mr. Gerard? It's a Hastings office calling. Hello, Gerard. Mr. Gerard. Come to the 15th floor immediately. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be right up. Looks like he didn't forget. Good luck. <clears throat> Mr. Gerard. Yes, uh-huh. You're to go right in. It's the uh, first office on the right. Thank you. under martial law. Sell or no sell? Yes, sir. Don't sell. Transfer to the East African Corporation. We'll uh, take it as a tax law. You were right. You're stubborn. Mm, and I was right about you, too. I told you to go home. But I've been reached. We all are. Sooner or later. No, no. Too speculative. Oh, that depends on the rail merger. Now, let's review this after we see what the ICC has up its sleeve. Right. Goodbye. Wolf? Oh, Mr. Gerard. Ah, I'm Mark Wilton, Mr. Hastings' assistant. Oh, how do you do? I, for a minute, I mistook you for him. Well, I take that as a compliment. But I suppose it's impossible for anyone to work with Mr. Hastings and not be influenced by him. Won't you sit down? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, it's Mr. Hastings I came to see. Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. He's in Copenhagen. However, he's authorized me to deal with you. I prefer to deal with him. I'm sorry. Lee, would you get the uh, teletype message off the machine for Mr. Hastings, please? Look, well, you're in touch with him. Why don't you put me in touch with him? Well, I suggest you read this first. Give to him, please. The only friend he ever had. He's changed a great deal since your college days. The worst part of it is he could see it coming. I beg your pardon? He said to me once, if I have to follow my father into the business, I'll have to give up everything I ever loved. In 10 years, I'll become everything you and I hate the most. It took him 12. 
All right, you're authorized to deal for him. Let's deal. Well, it would help if I knew what we were dealing with. All right. Two years ago, I staked out 700,000 acre mineral lease in Canada. Now, before I took up the options on it, I wrote to Wolf about it, and he wrote back and said that if I found anything worthwhile, that he'd pick up the options himself. And since that time, I, I've been prospecting. And what have you found? Well, uh, first, just low-grade iron ore. Well, I'm sorry, that's not worth the cost of mining it. Associated with the iron ore, if you let me finish, are folded sheets of titanium in the form of sulfonates and carbonates, which assay out at about $10 a pound. I estimate millions of tons. How much do you want? I'm sorry if Fred Gerard thinks our college association gives him any special claim on my attention. I transact his business with you like anyone else. Look, that's already been established. Now, come on, Gerard, you must know what the package is worth. Mm-hmm. I would have sold it to him personally for two million. It's worth three. I'll sell it to you for that. But you'd still be selling to him. It, but not personally. And that's worth an extra million? To lose a friend? At least. Oh, stop it. Wolf Hastings needs a friend a lot more than you do. Three million. When is your option up? In three days. But don't think you're going to get it for any less by cutting me out, because the value of the land is known. And if you don't deal with me, the price will double. But if we don't deal at all, you wind up with nothing, right? All right. So why make the point? Because Hastings might not care for your high-handed attitude any more than you care for his. Now, just, just remember your position. If a man like you loses a deal like this, the effect could be tragic. Well, I've known men to blow their brains out or jump off a tall building for far less reason. Well, I'm not that obliging. And let me tell you something. Whether or not we close this deal, I still intend to see Wolf Hastings. And I won't consider it closed until I do. Even with three million? Make it easier. You're not a clever man. Granted. But this is still a fair deal, so don't blow it, Mr. Wilton. Otherwise, Mr. Hastings might not like it. You have uh, maps, magnetic charts, assay reports, samples, and so forth? Right here. You just leave everything here with me. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. Meantime, you'll need a place to stay. Lee, something in the hotel. We'll do our very best. Oh, could you use a drink? I'll meet you out by the elevator. Yes, I'd like an executive suite for Mr. Fred Gerard. Where did Mr. Gerard go? He took the elevator down, Miss Wigan.
Good evening. Anybody home? I'm uh, Gerard, Fred Gerard. I'm from Canada. Please tell Mr. Hastings I'm here. He's expecting me. Turn out those lights. With The gas. Turn off the gas. It's off. The windows are open. It's all right. You're all right now. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah I'm, in, I'm in real good hands. This the room you arranged for me? Oh, don't talk. You don't even know what you're saying. Oh, on the phone, you arranged the suite, but I didn't know about the kitchen privileges. Oh. Fred, if I wanted you dead, why am I here? Uh, why? Why didn't you wait for me at the elevator? Huh? Oh. Oh, yeah, that, that. I... I had to catch a train. Oh, that's how you knew, the trains. I went up to the roof. You'd been there, but they wouldn't tell me where you'd gone. I searched every empty room and... Uh, why won't you do as I said? Why won't you go Say, home? Say, won't you get a demerit for breaking up my suicide attempt? <laughs> you know, I better start taking your friend Wilton more seriously. One thing I'll say for him, he really calls his shots. Yeah. Remember? A man like me losing a deal like that, no telling what I might do. Oh, wow. When he deals, he really deals. But you know who he represents. Wolf? Are you trying to tell me that Wolf ordered me killed? You invaded his privacy. You approached him without permission. Oh. He doesn't permit that. Lee, you don't seriously expect me to believe that. Believe it. Please, do me a favor. Believe no. it. I know Wolf Hastings. I've known him for a long, long time. Now, he may have changed, but he could never kill, never. A man's basic instincts don't change. You can still leave. He doesn't have to know you're alive. He'll never ask. His orders are never disobeyed. You know, I think I'm beginning to figure this whole thing out. Now I just crawl away, don't I? I'm scared of my life, scared to open my mouth again ever about this monster called Wolf Hastings, because if I believe he's guilty, then Mark Wilton can't be, and he's the one you really care about, because he's the one you can get. <laughs> hey, what is it between you and this girl? You want me out of the way because you think you can have the three million dollars for yourself? Oh, you're wrong, Professor. You're wrong, wrong, Wolf wrong. Wolf Hastings doesn't even know I'm here, does he? <laughs> does he? Does he? <laughs> Before you tried to catch that train, didn't you offer me a drink? The uh, lady ordered the usual. That's two bucks. Mm-hmm. She's cutting down. Good. 
Boy, when you offer to buy a girl a drink, you're awfully literal. I want you uninhibited, but not careless. Why? Because we're having guests. When you went to powder your nose, I made a telephone call, and we'll be entertaining the police any moment now. I don't think that's a very good plan, Professor. I want you to tell him the story you told me about Wolf Hastings, about how he was trying to kill me because he was angry and all. And what will that prove? Because if it's not true, you won't tell them. And if it is, they'll put Wolf Hastings behind bars where he belongs. Suppose it is true. Do you think I could say so? Well, why not? You hate him enough. Hate isn't everything, Professor. It can't buy money. All of us who work for Mr. Hastings own stock in his holding corporation. That assures him of our loyalty. Your policeman is here. Lee, I don't know what hold Wilton has on you, but whatever it is, now is the time to break it. I'm so sorry for you. I really am. Mr. Wickheimer, are you Mr. Gerard? Yes, officer. Attempt has been made on my life, and Miss Wickheimer here would like to tell you who was responsible. Oh. Is that so, Miss Wickheimer? Well, first he wanted to turn in a fire alarm. He settled for calling you. He's just loads of fun when he's drinking. Lee. Why don't you just put him away for the night? Really, he's his own worst enemy. Well, that won't be necessary, Lee. <laughs> Sorry to trouble you, officer. Thanks very much. Mr. Gerard is here doing business with me. He'll be leaving shortly. You sure it's all right, Mr. Wilton? Mr. Gerard has good reason to celebrate tonight. He and Mr. Hastings just closed a very important deal. Just so he doesn't get out of hand. Mr. Wickheimer, Mr. Wilton. Right. Thanks again. How's that? Who got him into this? I did. I can't trust myself alone. I've got a suicide complex. I believe that. However, Mr. Hastings is willing to forget the incident, if you are. That's a lot of forgetfulness. You'll notice he signed it personally. Did he? Also, it's drawn on a bank in Vancouver, your home base. Now, considering the amount, we must insist that you cash the check there within 24 hours. Otherwise, we'll have to stop payment. In other words, get lost or lose the deal. Well, Mr. Hastings feels that there should be nothing to keep you here, now that you have what you came for. Well, your bag is waiting in the lobby. everlasting friendship. I should forget myself. 
Oh, if I could, what grief should I feel? Preach some philosophy to make me mad, and thou shalt be canonized. For being not mad, but sensible of grief, my reason will be reasonable. How I may be delivered of these woes, and such as may occur If I were mad, It's really you. Yeah. yeah, and it's really you. Go away. Go on, go on. Well, come on in, Fred. Why did you come back? Because you wanted me to. Well, then you've met my two favorite people. Yeah, she's quite a complicated girl. Aren't they all? Now, come on, pour a drink for Fred, Miss W. That's what I call her, Miss W. I can hardly call her Miss Wickheimer. That's a name that belongs to a maiden aunt on your mother's side. Me, I had uncles. Half a dozen. They pinched me till I howled and left me their money. <laughs> well, Fred, it's good to see you. You look just the same. You haven't changed either, Wolf. And you're surprised. Mm -hmm. You were expecting eyes as hard as BBs, panatellas, and a paunch. Well, when I see myself, I'm amazed. I'm convinced one day I'll wake up to find a revolting Methuselah drooling back at me with all his horrors on his face. Is it that bad? Oh, no, I'm fine, really fine. I'm, I'm quite sunk in my pleasures. She reads me poetry. I heard the trains in the elevator. Marvelous, aren't they marvelous? How I love those old screechers. They're so ferocious. And so pure. Now, there was power that meant something. There's no time now. I fly everywhere. All the time zones get mixed up. Now, I have a theory. I live at least twice as long as most anybody. You see, death can only catch you when you stop. Don't stop. You're safe. And you're safe? Really safe? How did it turn out? How did what turn out? The land, the Canadian acres. What did you find? I mean, you don't know? He and Mark worked it out. Oh, yes, did he give you enough? Your signature was on the check. My signature's on hundreds of checks. I let Wilton handle the details. I trust him implicitly. Simply because he's utterly devoid of imagination. <laughs> Wolf. Wilton did everything he could to keep me from seeing you, and when I wouldn't go away, he tried to have me killed. Yes, poor Wilton. I told you he lacks imagination. He takes all his orders so very literally. This is my home here. I've taken extraordinary precautions to keep the world out of it, otherwise... I go mad. I must have time to myself, time to empty my mind. Miss W, would you uh, put on the last band on this record, please? All aboard.
fun, wasn't it? It's a really fun recording. Of course, we don't play it every hour on the hour. We limit ourselves to five or six times a day. I'm surrounded by enemies. And there is no gratitude, none at all. They don't realize what I had to do. That one cannot master absolute power, that it masters you. Well, I, I'm the slave here. And no one could help me. I'll help you, Wolf. Let me. Do you remember the time the two girls came up for the homecoming game? And we told them you were a violin prodigy and you wore the fur-lined gloves to the dance to protect your hands? And we told them that you always carried a flask of brandy and orange juice? And that you had an incurable disease that would carry you away when you were 25? Please leave now. I don't want you here anymore. You made him such a tragic figure, he ended up with both girls. You hear what I said? I said, get out! Get out and don't come back! You're not my friend! Seen you. Satisfied? You're the only one he has left. Take care of him, Lee. Oh, sure. Sure, I'm a regular buddy. Fred? But don't go. I need you. Go on, go on before it's too late. Didn't you hear him? He needs me. There's nothing you can do. You got your money, you saw your friend. What more do you want? A friend. I'm sorry about the way I spoke. I've been under great strain. They say my father is going to die. Just a matter of time. Pardon me if I get sloshed. Wolf. Your father's been dead for 14 years. No, no, they, they took him to the hospital on Sunday. If he asks to see me, I'm lost. What am I gonna do, Fred? I can't refuse to see my own father. But if he makes me take over the business, it's the end of me. I have to give up everything I care for. It's not that I can't run the business. I can, better than he does. It'll, it'll destroy me. I'll go under. In the end, I'll have to become everything that you and I hate the most. Well, let's not think about that now. Let's have a drink and talk about it after graduation. Yeah. Huh? But remember, I drink nothing but brandy and orange juice. <laughs> it helps keep me warm. You've no idea how drafty the average concert hall is. Tell her about the incurable disease. Uh, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. All right. Our Yasha is very delicate, you know, miss. He has an incurable disease. He may be dead by the time he's 25. Well, stop it. Stop Maybe it. if a doctor had been called in time, he wouldn't be incurable. Why wasn't a doctor called in late? Because if it became known that Ayasha was incurably ill, his managers couldn't live off him anymore. Is that it? Yes, yes, that's it. And yet you care for our prodigy. You must hate yourself for what you're doing. I ask you before, Lee, what does Wilton have on you? Well, it's not all that sinister, Gerard. I'm your brother. Somebody please play the last band on the record. Oh, Wolf, you're upset. I blame myself. I've done all I could to ensure your privacy, and most people 
respect your right to have it. Mr. Gerard is the exception. Well, then get rid of him. Don't let it happen again. I have no time for this. Oh, look, Wolf, I'm your friend. Well, I'm sure you mean to be. I'm tired now. I've authorized Mr. Wilton to handle the matter, whatever it was. Miss W., I do wish you'd read to me now. I'm sure my father will be all right. He's, uh, he's quite indestructible, you know. That man needs help. He's suffering. I don't think you're in a position to judge. He's really much happier now since I've taken the burden off his shoulders. Well, sickness isn't happiness. Well, perhaps there isn't any real happiness for a man like that. Well, he lasted. He was inspired. I learned from him. But I learned his weakness, too. He couldn't destroy an enemy without destroying a part of himself. But you can't hide him away forever. What do you hope to gain? Time. Wolf will be discreetly committed to an institution. In a year to 18 months, by then, I'll have control. It takes time to wean the public's confidence away from so commanding a figure. But uh, as you observed, I remind people of him. Only at first. He's asleep. Good. Go downstairs. Go to your room. Without my supper? Am I being punished? Do as I say. I'll leave when Mr. Gerard leaves. Mr. Gerard is not ready to leave. Well, then I'll stay until he is. Lee, didn't we decide last time that you weren't going to disobey me again? Here you are, baby. Here, take it. You can take it to bed with you. Now you run along like a good little sister. Oh, sweet heaven. You're supposed to be celebrating, remember? That policeman will. So celebrate. I don't feel like celebrating. This would be much less painful for all of us. Go. Lee, get to your room. There's nothing for you to hear.
Fred! Both get back. I'll handle this. Oh, out of my way, little man. I said keep back. It's time you knew you're sick. You're nothing. You're finished. I'm in charge here. I'll get it over with. Do it now. All right, that's enough. I'll keep back. I'll use this, Wolf. All right, go ahead. They were going to throw you off the roof. <laughs>